Hi there, today I want to talk about how to write a good teaching statement for a faculty application package. Now a faculty application contains a, a bunch of different parts. There's the research statement, the teaching statement, your cover letter and versus other things that you need like your CV and publication list. Of all these, it, at least universities where research is a main focus, the teaching statement is probably the one that people pay the least attention to because they also think it's the least important. And that overall may be true. However, I think it's still important to carefully think about the teaching state. And that is for a number of reasons. The first reason is maybe there is, in terms of research, kind of a tie between candidates. But the one candidate that also shows that they're going to be a good teacher, or at least has an interest in showing that, may win out because of that. So therefore, I think it is also worth thinking about the teaching statement very carefully. The second reason is that teaching is going to be a major part of your new job as a faculty member. And so therefore it is, I think, very good to reflect on what kind of a teacher you want to be. And this is the kind of thing that you also write down in your teaching statement. So I think this is good no matter what. The third reason is the committee just needs to know that you can do this job. And there is no real set criteria for that. There's normally no formal requirements for you to show that you're a teacher. There's also normally the teaching trial lecture that you give as part of some of the job interviews in some countries, for example, in Germany. And those are the things that are all taken into consideration to decide that you are also suitable as a teacher, basically. So at research intensive institutions, the teaching may be relatively lower down the list of priorities and you have also the teaching lecture to give. And I have seen some of the hirings being definitely in part decided by, let's say, poor performance during the teaching lecture, not so much maybe by the, by the teaching statement, but still having said that and everything I said, <laughs> it's still worth doing a good job on your teaching statement. And here's a couple of thoughts <laughs> for you to consider for making that teaching statement as good as it can be. The first point goes for like all of these uh, different components of your package and it's a start early, don't wait until the last minute. Um, this, the teaching statement, especially like the first part of it, it requires you to just reflect on your experience, what kind of teacher you want to be and how you write that down. So don't leave that to the last minute. Also, you can reuse that for every position. This is the part that you don't necessarily really have to tailor for every different application you send out. So you can just write that once and then just reuse it. And so don't wait until the last minute, start early with that. Second point is be concise, don't make this too long. I think one or two pages is enough. Make sure that one or two pages are done in the way I explained below, but I think that doesn't necessarily really need to be long because nobody wants to read a long teacher, teaching statement. Um, people in the committee, they have to go through lots and lots of different applications. So don't write something that's too long, write something that's short and to the point. Also what helps people read your teaching statement is use a clear structure, use headers, subheaders, highlights, make it easy to basically access. Now you start with your teaching philosophy or your teaching attitude, whatever you want to call that. That is by far the most difficult thing to write in this because this is where you need that self-reflection. You need to gather your experience that you've had, gather your experience that you've had as a teacher, but also your experience maybe as a student and put it together into a coherent statement of what kind of a teacher do you want to be. Now you can start with something general like I enjoy teaching because in the teaching process I like to put in the excitement of doing research so it makes the teaching more exciting and I also like to get the feedback from this teaching interaction to serve as a you know inspiration for my research or something. Um, these are sort of things you can glean from various websites, maybe sample teaching statements. They're sort of more general. I mean they're okay but I think you then need to follow that up with something that's much more personal. So don't just stay in these general platitudes for your teaching statement that you can just copy paste from a web page. That will be obvious. <laughs> so also make them more personal so that it's clear that you wrote that and you thought about it, you reflected on this point. And so this is of course not so easy. And so here are some thoughts about what you can write about. You could write about, for example, if you already have teaching experience, what has worked for you? 
like what kind of thing that you have tried out really worked for what kind of teaching. And also maybe what really hasn't worked and what you have learned from that. That's also valuable. You can write about from the perspective of your, yourself as a student, like what has really worked for you? Who has really inspired you and as a teacher when you were a student and how exactly did that happen? What did they do? Have you analyzed that and uh, used it basically in the way you teach? You can reflect on why you teach the way you do. Like, uh, what is your goal? Like, for example, I am I find it very important to relate to people that science is a process done by people. So I always emphasize the process in doing something and um, that it's not always a straight line and that it's done by people with their failings. So I think that is something that you could add, for example, in your philosophy. And of course, you can ask about methods or technologies that you have used and in this day and age maybe also large language models or AI or what kind of tools have you tried out and what have you learned from them and what's your attitude towards these tools. And you can also add if you have something very specific from your own CV, you can add that in there. Like for example, I have in my case <laughs> experienced educational systems in, in, in three different countries, in Germany, UK and uh, the US and so I take some bits that I like from each of these systems and I try to incorporate them into the way I teach. So this is something that you can add that of course is very highly dependent on, on your background and, and your situation and, and your experiences. But that, that is the point. Huh? So I mean the teaching statement, it should be this personal bit. And so that is where that belongs. Now the next part needs to be the courses that you have taught. And then, you know, just a one or two sentence description of what they are about. That's pretty easy. I mean, obviously you know which, which, which courses you taught, but that is also the part where you can customize a little bit. You can, for example, say, I have taught a course in general ecology and I understand this is also a requirement for this position in your department and I would be well prepared for that because I've already done it. Or I've been, teach, uh, I've been teaching that as a team with somebody, I understand this will be the case in your university as well and so I'm already very well set up for that. For that it is very good if you want to write that section very well and tailor it a little bit. It's good to know the name of the degree programs of that department or school. What is it called? Is it biology, biological sciences? <laughs> is it environment or something? So uh, look up the, the names of the, of the uh, programs that for the bachelor's degree, for the master's degree and also for the PhD. What are they called? I think this is just basic stuff to look up. Sometimes that's also included in the job ad. You know, the candidate will be expected to teach within the so-and-so program. But, you know, go do these five minutes of research to find out what is actually the teaching that they would be requiring to the extent that you can find that out and at least mention the, the degree programs and how you would fit in with what you have already done. I think that is how you make that section really excellent. Of course, everybody can list their courses, but then go the extra mile with a little bit of research to say like, and I think this would fit in well within the degree programs that you have. I think this is nice to do because, you know, I mean, this doesn't need to be super detailed, but at least it sends the message you care about what they do. You have done a little bit of research and that is already going to be perceived very positively. What you can also add on this point is, are you planning on developing any new courses? For example, I would like to develop a course in my specialty called such and such and I believe this could fit in as let's say an upper division course in the Bachelor of something rather. So if you have the plan to develop a new course then this is also the, the place to put that. Now here are some points if you don't have a lot of teaching experience yet. This is something that is actually not so uncommon unless you already have a job. Um, or teaching was part of your previous appointment as a postdoc, which, you know, it often really formally isn't a part of your experience as a postdoc. So what do you do if you don't have a lot of formal teaching experience? Here's some thoughts of what you can add there. So what you can do, I already mentioned in the teaching philosophy statement, you can put in some perspectives from your time as a student or a postdoc, like what were things that really impressed you about how people taught. That is something you can reflect on and you can mention. 
when it comes to teaching, you shouldn't forget that that also includes mentoring. And so you will have some mentoring experience. You know, you will have help bachelor students, master students, maybe PhD students, maybe junior postdocs, depending on what you did and what your position previously was. You will have mentored people and you can include that mentoring experience as part of your teaching experience if you have very little formal classroom teaching experience. Maybe you also did workshops or other sessions where you spread your knowledge. Maybe in, even in your lab, you know, maybe you organized a workshop or a round table on a new method, a new molecular method or a new statistical method. Maybe you did something like that at a conference or at a meeting. So if you did workshops or sessions like that, that is something you can definitely also list. Yeah, just anything like that. It is also training sessions. Maybe you trained people to do something. Uh, it's not formal classroom teaching, but it is maybe a training session for lab members or for members of the department in which you were that you can list as well. Maybe you organized a journal club. You know, maybe you contributed to the organization of a journal club. That's also work. You also, you know, have thought this through so you can include that as well. And then what is more common, maybe you helped with a lab, maybe you contribute to some of the teaching in the past where you maybe didn't design a whole course, but you maybe gave a guest lecture or maybe you contributed to uh, a particular lab in a course with an exercise. So that, of course, is something that you can add as well. Now, if you have a bit more experience, you can, of course, also add any rewards. It's obvious if you have won a teaching award at some level, even as a PhD student or at any other level, you add that in there. If you have received any training, specific training in teaching, if you've earned any certificates, for example, at your university in teaching at some level, or anything that can be related to teaching also like mentoring or supervision, you also mention that. In some countries, there are separate statement required for uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and you would supply them separately. But if you have any experience or any thoughts about that, that relate to teaching specifically, it would also be nice to include that in the teaching statement because that shows that you have thought about it, that you're serious about it, you've reflected on it, and well, you put something on paper there. So I think that can only help you, even though that may also be required in a separate statement. It would be good to infuse your teaching statement also with some mention of that. Like if you had any experience with teaching uh, in front of a diverse group of students, let's say. And that's it. I hope it helped you write a really nice teaching statement and good luck with your applications. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye.